of my noisy neighbor, Alfonso. Oh, the toilet. Toilet smell. Yes, yes. However, that does mean knowing where you have been that I know why you are here. Alfonso, despite his um, auditory or sensory or olfactory challenges, is a fine, fine tailor. And from whence you were equates to the fact that he has at least begun the process of fashioning you a fine garment, a suit, dress, jumper, tracksuit, whatever. And though perhaps he has not referred you to me, I infer and refer myself to you. For what is a royal without a crown? Why go to the considerable expense of visiting Alfonso, spending all of your hard-earned wing-wangs on a garment, a gown, to make you feel confident, and not top it off? not pop the cherry on, so to speak, the top of the cake. Your tiara, a crown, a hat, yes? You require a hat. Hmm. Now, before, before we begin the process of oh, millinery, I always ask my new clients, if they know the origin, etymology of the phrase, mad as a hatter. Do you? Everybody does, I know. And I know you probably do, too. But I'm going to tell you, anyway. The phrase originates from a time long ago when hatters, milliners, were in a state of civil war. Top hats versus bowler hats. Straw hats versus felt. Stetsons versus trilbies. Pork pies versus the world. Utter chaos. The tailors, the cobblers, the other garment, artisans and skilled manufacturers and laborers cowered at the sheer force of hatters being at war, and they said, lo, on that day, let nobody forget how mad 
one has to be to be a hatter and hat was hat I guess of course it is a joke that didn't really happen if it did it wasn't recorded and what isn't recorded doesn't matter isn't that right no 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 it is because of the mercury as you probably know I still like to consume a little bit every so often but it does mean that when you meet a hatter on the whole they will not have consumed said said element no 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 so that means that well if you meet a hatter who is mad it's a pre-existing condition so please be thoughtful be patient and you know humor them as much as possible anyway <laughs> on with the show oh you are admiring my small clipboard and noticing that the tape measure fell onto the floor one of the hazards of wearing it around one's neck without supervision but the small clipboard it's quite wonderful isn't it I always say the best things in life are small and hard though it's hardly worth mentioning hmm. let me see if I can almost toppled we'll put her there for now hmm. for the best hats hats you would like one yes well good name occupation second name second occupation no 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 all preliminary research to calculate to cogitate oh am I sounding like Alfonso no I don't mean to do that I'm trying to work out what kind of hat you want yeah all right as you know well, perhaps you don't. The British, I am that, is um, where they make the finest hats, historically speaking. Many may contest, but when you have a wealth of such, well, raw material, cannot contest the wool here. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. We will make your hat today with felt, but felt is it's versatile. It's um, no, it can be made out of any fiber, but we only use the highest quality products. You can believe me. We'll use wool, hmm. British ore, felt is compressed pressed and coagulated fibers yes felt is feeling because it's the past participle of course it's versatile enough and malleable enough that we can create a shape for any head but of course I need to take some measurements and ask a few questions this suit that Alfonso is constructing for you I imagine as we speak is so desperate did he indicate at all what it will look like or how it will be in compass no no I didn't think so here's a mercurial oh, not mercury a mercurial be unpredictable but ever so friendly perhaps too friendly did he offer you a discount of some description or the, the prattle the patter about cost yes 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 well there will be no such discussion with I hmm? oh where are my manners for this uh, 
faux pas. I shall give you a discount of 20%. No more, no less. Um, no more. Hmm. Well, my name is Thomas Trilby, which is ironic because I tend not to make trilbies. I find them distasteful. A little too um, wild west for my liking, shall we say. But yes, TT for short. Just T, if you're British. A pleasure to meet you. Mm, I apologize. Of course, my name is on the uh, bloody door. But never mind. What kind of hat would you like? I'm all ears. All ears. I mean, I have very large ears. They are real, by the way. People ask quite a lot. Who would pay to look this way? I mean, to look this good. Please, 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 proceed. For your accoutrement, your accompaniment, your hat Yes, yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. Very tasteful. Hmm. Did Alfonso bother to tell you what colour your garment was? No. Just said he'd do it, nearly, and you just left him to it. Mm, sounds about right. You know it's not even really Italian. No, no, no. Not at all. I am. Well, no, I've been to, uh, to Florence. Hollybobs, yes. Very good. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yes, yes, yes. All right. All right, calm down. Don't need to get too excited. Your bonds. Hmm. Your bonds and high barnet. Your ed. Hmm. Your milliband. I think you know what I have to do. Admire it. What a head it is to behold. You could be the head of state. You could be the uh, figurehead on a boat. You could be a cake topper. <laughs> I feel this is the only head that I have seen that would make a guillotine look good. Hmm. Yes, uh, that makes sense. In my head. But now I must um, compose. Pre-compose. Pre-suppose. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. There's more to the hat than the head. There's everything else. Proportioning you, slicing you up, and icing you down, working out, oh, well, yes, a trim, a brim of that expanse will fit the rest of how you walk in France. Not make sense? You don't stroll down the Champs Elysees looking at hats and clothes. Maybe one day we shall go together. Maybe we'll take Alfonso as well, like a dog. Hmm, that doesn't make sense, but I meant like a pet. He can sleep in the hold with the luggage. I'm rambling, aren't I? Yes, I tend to do that when I get excited. When I talk hat, I get a bit like hat. Hmm. Do you remember when I dropped this earlier? That was a bit of fun, wasn't it? So, what must we measure? We must measure the nose, or the nose, the E's, or the eyes, the ears, I have two, the circumference of the head, the radius, diameter, and then I must do a gentle incision along the forehead, lift up the flap, 
look in the skull and check the prefrontal lobes to make sure they won't be damaged. I'm joking, there is no surgery. The only surgery will be on the fur of the sheep. But please, I must ask, with your permission, if I may approach a little closer, that much closer, to observe your beautiful bonds. Hmm. So look straight ahead for me, please. Look at my face. I know, unbearable, but if you could just try. You can close your eyes if you're scared, I suppose, but you shouldn't be. Hmm. What are we dealing with here? You know, I went to a hat shop when I was a child, back in 1832. I entered the shop, I was looking for a bowl I had then, can you believe it, what a fool? And they measured my head. This is a true story. The circumference and laughed at me. They laughed me out of the shop, for my head was so large that there was not a crown on this world that would fit it. Tragedy. And that day, that is when I decided I became a militant milliner. I would make hats for head shapes of all sizes, and no disparagement would be cast. Just honest affection and compliments. You look wonderful today. You see, I meant that. Perhaps you looked awful yesterday, but today, absolutely wonderful. What are we dealing with? A good sized head. That's what I'm looking at. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting behind. Mm -hmm. Pardon me for a moment. Don't want my double Windsor to come out. And that wasn't a euphemism. This is. Are you noticing my little clipboard? Oh, you already did. Did I make a joke? Yes? Was it funny? Because I don't remember you laughing. Don't make me say it again. We wouldn't want that, would we? Can you imagine? What would the neighbours say? How do you feel about tricorn hats? Pirate or naval? Mm. A little archaic or esoteric, I suppose, but still they're making a comeback. I knew someone in college who wore a tricorn hat. That's true. Yes, I went to college on the Seven Seas. That part isn't true. I don't think they have colleges on the Seven Seas because, um, well, where would you go to the toilet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to dabble. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very technical. Oops. All right. Very briefly for me, my dear. While the gulls call, could you close your ears for me? You don't know how? That's strange. If you don't know how to close your ears, how do you turn off sound? I see. Very interesting. All right, in that case, could you try well, we're trying to get a big picture here, how things look. For instance, your ears, when you close them like that, tells me how low the hat can go. Yes, and then I take into account the sweat band thickness and all sorts. Let's try an easier one then. Your brow, I need to know where it lies. So if you'd be so kind, and ever so patient, would you please close your eyes? Thank you. Oh, wonderful wonderful brow. 
open them again for me briefly thank you yes yes good range good range you could be an actor an eyebrow actor All right just one more time close them again for me please oh yes yes I'm getting the full picture now absolutely yes yes but feel free open them up again let's take a look at those beautiful peepers jeepers creepers what absolutely delightful peepers Hmm. Oh, I'm not surprised if Alfonso's measurements weren't as thorough as mine. He's lazy, you see. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm? Me? Oh, I'm from around here, London. Where we are? Hmm, Bethnal Green, would you believe it? Hmm. Well, I like to speak Francais because that's where my family were from. Oh, yes. This area, oh, a wonderful area. Yes, you should move here. You can get the suits from Al, you can get the hats from me, and. Hmm. Well, you'll have to see who else lives on this street, but we're all absolutely charming, just like you. Perfect. Now, do you know, and I need to check, because there's a, there's a fairly significant price tag attached to this, this, this item, this hat. Do you know how hats are made? Have you ever seen a hat being made? Hmm? Well, I'm going to give you Oh, because I like you, little chance. Would you like to, to learn a bit more about millinery hat making? Hmm? All right. This won't be your hat because this one is not is not going to be good. I haven't got my tools front of house, you see. But I can still show you a little bit if you like. Yes? Would you like that? You can learn a bit and then you'll see how it all sort of comes together. Like, yes? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. It's quite a nice process. See the magic happening. All right, so, um, well, we've got this tool, hat makers, called, called a hat block. Now, it's a block that's sort of a dome, which is half a sphere. See, mathematics coming in there. And it's on top of a plate. And we use that to shape the hat based on the measurements that we've taken here. I mean, I'll show you on this. Um, mannequin's head for now. Let's pretend it's here is where the block would stop and under here is a plate for the rim or the brim of the hat. Now let's say that this handsome chappy was you, a 21. That's that's fairly average. So I hear. It doesn't matter the size. That doesn't. All right so on here what you do is you take the block and ah. oh for shame look at this this is unformed it's an old hat that's been doused in poor hair to lose its old very uh, unfortunate shape I mean right now it sort of looks like I don't know um, some sort of Victorian piece, perhaps a uh, pilgrim hat, but what we'll do, and it's what I was going to do today anyway, so we can take a look, is try to shape it into more of a fashionable one, yes? So what you do, first of all, is with this uh, oh, straw, I do love straw hats, but they're ever such a pig to make, yes, absolute schlep, but here we are. Your head, the block, goes here. And what we would do is take the form of the hat and pull it down. Excuse me, darling. You're going to cause problems for me, aren't you? Let's put you there by your friend. Put it on here and we stretch down like that. 
as hard as you like and we will start to what we what we call stretch the crown rather rather lovely term is it now and you can see already even here that the original shape is starting to rescind a little now what we would do then typically is steam the hat now because as you know because i told you felt is made of densely condensed and packed uh, and that would be where the mercury came in to sort of unite the different fibers uh, material this is um, wool I believe wool fiber and when you steam it of course it becomes it becomes wet and it becomes more moldable to the hat block or the form so you can pull down as hard as you like there really give it some welly and yes you can see it here it's forming up now let's see yes all right piece of string uh, nothing up here nothing up here I detest magic magicians I should be more specific well not them personally the practice of magicianry hmm. there are no magic magician shops down the street we'll chase them out of town all right stretch that down like that and then what we do is once we're happy and you know I think I could actually do a little bit of a better job with that there we go perfect then we start to form her up and I might even be tempted in this instance but I don't worry about using pins because you can heal the fiber after let's pin her down people try to pin me down it sounds like I've committed a crime I meant for sort of where I'm from and things like that I haven't committed any crimes apart from making absolutely delectable hats all right so we pin this down and we would steam that nicely and then when we were happy enough with the form we would heat it up but what we're going to do is take this string and tie the hatter's knot and you can see on this form actually here I've I've got the lines of the different parts of the face your face down here we can see the eyes are here so we know that we want the brim to be around here yes so we take the string pop it around the line that we know is there and when we're ready we tie it off as tight as we can because it will help us to form now this is called the hatter's knot it's the old practice of just ensuring that we know we can pull it down a bit as well that we know where the brim will sit what is called the the brake line yes the brake line is here on this fellow well now doesn't it look rather like a lovely summer hat sort of like that one but this one's going to be a bowler hat by the way commission so we can turn this out now you see to where we know that the line is and it's a bit of a pig but you get the idea in fact I would probably hasten to pin down some of the parts there there here 
Oh no, this is all helpful because I can steam it up later and watch it form, you see? And I can use this as a block, it's just a bowler hat. Right, lift to the, do you remember what it was called? The brake line, yes. Oh, and there goes my tack, but that's all right. And already you can see this could be the pirate hat that you wanted. You wanted a pirate hat, yes? No, you didn't. You didn't want a pirate hat. Now with the brake line in place, mm -hmm. like that, what we would do then is we would dry it so that it sets, yes? And if I had the uh, hat as block here with the, the proper brim base, I would then take the brim cutter and cut along the set diameter by, by measurement of the customer's face on the brow to the proper rim length, yes? But we don't have that particular tool with us. So let's just, just to demonstrate, I'll use my shears first. And you would have this, it spins. Let's, uh, well, I'll use the big guns and show you up close. You couldn't do this by eye, really, but. a little sad still but what we'll do eventually is put a wooden tube or ring in here to flesh out those parts but the next point is well it's called pouncing well, yes it's my favorite part what you do is you um, actually refine the surface with possibly the most ghastly sound in the world, but I'm going to make you hear it. Sounding it, you can see here, all over the hat, there's still fine fibers and it's not smooth. And you can also use it to smooth down the brim, and don't forget that felt is a lot of different fibers basically wrapped together as tightly as possible. So there will be tiny hairs coming off here. So one thing you can do once you're done with the sanding is you can take a match. You should use a fire tool really. You can try striking it, although these have been a bit temperamental recently. Let's give it a go. Perfect. Take the flame and very carefully burn off. Excess fibers in that manner, yes. For a smoother finish. You can use one of these tools to oh, pounce the brim like that, yes. You bring that around like that, just to absolutely ensure that the uh, brake line stays in place. Now, like I said, we will have to properly mold the, um, the brim independently because the bowler hat is characterized by that and very, very pleasant curve that, that peaks up and gathers rainwater. <laughs> so yes, this is this. And then, as you know, excess fiber we would burn off. It's very fun. Like so. 
Ooh, being careful not to, of course, <laughs> burn the air. The rudiment of the felt. Dust her off. And then, this is not complete and I'm not happy with it, obviously, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's say that it was and that on the whole I was happy. Perhaps I am, perhaps I'm not, who knows? As you and I become more and more acquainted, I'm sure we'll share a glass of rosé and talk about it, or not. Depends how British you are, I suppose. But we look in here, and I think this is rather sweet as a hat, as it is. But it's not what the client wants. Now I've started to get the shape. <laughs> Come on, you beggar. Like so. Well, now it looks like a very poor bowler hat, but you're getting the idea, yes? Looks like the kind of thing Charlie Chaplin might wear. But inside, of course, we need to protect the fabric and also protect the head. So, here, yes. We would sew in the finest straps of that form the sweat bands. Yes. I use two most of the time, one in the front and one in the back. What's not to like about that? And we would put these in here, like that, mm -hmm. to protect the fabric and to collect sweat. Leather is very water repellent in that respect. We would sew these in. If I hadn't dropped the tack on the floor, then I would stick them in. But you get the idea with that. Finally, the trim, which would typically be a bow. Rather like this. And we would take off the hatter's knot, thus take the bow, pop it around the trim, and tie it off with a lovely bow and then either sew or glue that down. I would sew, but it's fine to glue. I would do a lovely pattern along the top there. And this one is awful, but you get the idea. Hmm. Well, it certainly won't fit me, as I've already told you. I have um, Humorously large head, but hmm. yes, by Jove, perhaps that's the one. Could have saved an awful lot of time if I'd just done that at the start. We'll have a look around in the mirrors, see what you think, if you like it. It's yours for free. I said it was a commission, it's just a mistake I made. Covering my tracks. Hmm. No, I, I'm quite enamoured with it actually. I think it really suits you. That's all. It was a pleasure. And, uh, well, I know that people, people think that all, all hatters are a little bit Hattie, but um, I hope that you don't think bad. Enjoy the hat. I'll do your real one soon. I'll get to work on it. But if you see Al, tell him I said hello. But no more than that. He doesn't need to know. All right. 
You take care. TT will be here waiting for you with a cup of tea if you fancy it. Fancy it. Ta-ta. From TT.